So I looked at this and thought, well, hang on a second, surely there's a way to get around this. So as I looked at markets more and more, I realized that there are times when the market is basically random. In other words, it's going through times when there's no clear pattern. But within that, there's times like we see here on the YM going down to this last low. There are times when you get a nice, lovely one, two, three, four, five. Then you get lovely times when there's a nice ABC pattern as well. So there were times when the picture was clear, but there were also times when the picture wasn't, when it was random. So what I started to realize was that markets go through cycles. In other words, they have times when they're random. They have times when the picture's clear. It's like driving through fog. You get times when you can't see the road, and basically you don't know where you're going. You have to slow down or stop or go nowhere. Then the, the fog clears, and suddenly the road becomes um, a bit more obvious, and you can start to drive a bit quicker, and you know where you're going. So this is what I basically started to develop. and took the idea that markets were going in cycles, which I nicknamed uh, the cyclical nature of trading, cyclical nature of markets, and then looked at say, okay, how do you then approach an Elliott Wave um, strategy that's meant to predict things 100% of the time in basically an environment that's random half the time? Well, I said, how about looking at things in isolation? In other words, let's only work with the good picture when the picture's clear. Now, to me, that made perfect sense, but that went against a lot of uh, traditional Elliott Wave teaching because, effectively, I was saying half the time the market's random, therefore, you just you shouldn't look at the market at all. But I went on and developed this over the years, and this became the backbone of MT Predictor. So how do we do this then? Well, how do we know when the, the picture's becoming clearer? In other words, how do we know where to start? Well, the way we developed was basically we looked at the higher time frame chart. So this is a 15-minute chart. A higher time frame, we look to a time frame that's between three and five time frames higher, the next logical time frame up. So if you're looking at a 15-minute chart, you'd go out to the 60-minute. If you're, say, looking at a daily chart, you go out to the weekly. If you're, say, looking at Forex charts on, say, a uh, four-hour or eight-hour, you'd probably go out to the daily chart. So you're looking for something, a logical time frame above that you're trading off. And for this, we then wanted to see where the markets are going to come into support and resistance zones. I'll just put a bit of uh, space on the right-hand side here. I'll move the chart just over a little bit here. So what we're looking at is we're looking at areas where we could anticipate support and resistance. And for this, we develop what we call our decision point. A decision point is an area where, quite simply, we hover over a pivot, like I'm doing here. A right mouse click and then select decision point. This gives us an area on the chart in advance. But that's the important point. It's a leading indicator. It's there on the chart in advance. In other words, it's out there ready for the market to um, go to it. We're not saying it's going to, but what we're doing is we're waiting to see if the market does react to these levels. So on this 60-minute chart of the YM, there was the support level. The market then came down hit that level very nicely, and then started to rally back up again. Let's just go to the 15-minute chart and see what that looked like on the 15-minute chart. Here it is on the 15-minute chart. So here you were looking to trade the 15-minute chart, and you had this area of higher time frame support there on your chart. The market comes down and suddenly hits it. In other words, the picture starts to suddenly become clear. The market starts to react off this. In other words, it's doing what you're anticipating it's going to do. In other words, you're anticipating support, it's found support. 